Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast podcast, episode number 118. You are listening to the podcast that brings you the best in educational technology right from the developers themselves. Thank you for allowing TeacherCast to be a part of your professional learning network, and thank you for taking the time to make TeacherCast a part of your PLN. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and if this is the first time you're listening to the show, thank you so much. We have a great show for you today. Today, we're talking with the Microsoft Surface team. A brand new version of the Microsoft Surface has just dropped, and I am so excited to be bringing it to you today. There's, of course, several ways that you can connect with our show each and every week. We love it when you find us on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. And, of course, subscribe to this audio and video show over on TeacherCast.net slash iTunes and TeacherCast.net slash YouTube. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are wrapping up what has been known as Microsoft March Madness. This is the eighth podcast that we have done with the Microsoft Education team. And I got to tell you, it has been absolutely a joy to have them on. We've talked about Office 365. We've talked about Microsoft OneNote. We've talked about the return possibly of our good friend Clippy, but you got to watch all of our shows to check that out. Today, I have a fantastic guest. We're talking all about the brand new Microsoft Surface and why your school needs to utilize it for your everyday needs. I want to bring on to the show Miss Jacqueline Russell. Jacqueline, how are you today? Welcome to the show. Thank you for joining us on TeacherCast. Thanks, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here today. My name is Jacqueline Russell. I um, work on the Surface team here at Microsoft, uh, and I'm the Education Industry Marketing Manager for Surface. I am so thrilled to have you on today, Jacqueline, talking a lot about Surface. Now, let's talk a little bit about what a Surface is. It's a tablet device, but it's also a very powerful, would you call it a desktop PC? Yes, we say it's the lap, the tablet that can replace your laptop because it looks like a tablet. It's got the touch screen and the sort of mobility of a tablet. But, you know, you click in that keyboard and you flip out the kickstand and you have a fully productive laptop as well. Now, I'm sure school districts out there are looking to figure out where to find more information about this amazing device that came up. You can go to surface.com slash education. Let me bring this up here. What are some of the things that we can find over at the Microsoft Surface education website? Yep, so you can find out more about the Surface devices that we have and also education pricing uh, for Surface as well as sort of where to buy them. And um, you can also find some great case studies of schools that have deployed Surface and sort of the benefits that they're finding with this device in their schools. Now, I'm glad that you brought that up because if we switch over here to the regular Surface site, you can see that there's two different models. There's a Surface 3 and a Surface Pro 3. What are the differences? Should the school districts go for the regular or should they beef up and go for the Pro versions? Yes, we just introduced the Surface 3 earlier this week, and we um, I like to call it sort of the little brother to the Surface Pro 3. Um, it essentially has a, a similar benefits of sort of the touch screen, the digital inking, the integrated keyboard and kickstand, but it's a smaller device and it's a more affordable device. So it's great for schools looking for, um, for devices at sort of that 500 price point uh, as their one-to-one -one computing device. Now, why a tablet device? There's a lot of schools that are moving away from tablets these days. Maybe they had bought iPads in the past. Maybe they had bought other types of tablets. Why would a school district want to stick with a tablet and not purchase a really inexpensive, say, Chromebook, laptop, Mac Air? Why a Surface? Yes, well, that's an excellent question, Jeff. And it just so happens that we get that question a lot from education customers. So let me go ahead and talk through why we believe a service device is uniquely differentiated from a tablet or a laptop-only device. 
Okay, so what I usually do is get back to basics by mapping out what exactly are the activities and tasks that are currently going on inside of a typical classroom today. So we, I tend to say that the three big activities that have traditionally always been part of the learning process and sort of take place in virtually every classroom around the world are one, you know, reading, uh, reading out of textbooks, literature, stories. Uh, two is writing, so students, you know, writing in notebooks, taking notes. Um, and then three is uh, sort of the teacher presentation, right? It's teacher standing in, in front of the class um, and, and lecturing or presenting a lesson using a chalkboard or a whiteboard. Um, of course, we all know that there are other activities that happen inside of a classroom, you know, like watching multimedia content, like films or videos, uh, individual study time for students to work through problem sets, assessment, of course, um, the, the tests and quizzes, and then more and more of this um, collaboration or group work or, or project-based learning. Now, increasingly, devices are being brought into the classroom to support many of these tasks, but we are seeing that some devices are better able to support certain activities than others. So tablets like the iPad are great for individual consumption-based activities. So reading books, you know, watching videos, uh, playing educational games, great for that, but maybe not so good for you know, content creation or productivity type tasks. Um, you bring a, a laptop type device like a Chromebook into the classroom and you can extend your coverage here, uh, certainly to assessment with built-in keyboard and you know, lockdown mode. And, uh, and you know, with, with Chromebooks, you do have access to cloud-based collaboration tools. Um, but there are drawbacks to, you know, a cloud-only solution, and we are seeing more and more evidence, actually, that putting keyboards in front of especially younger students um, who are still learning to write and to spell is actually, um, it inhibits their, their learning. Um, and so, you know, there are some drawbacks. And even with these two very, very common devices in education, you can see that we are still missing out on two of the three main activities that go on inside classrooms today. So, you know, students still need their notepads and their notebooks um, and pens and pencils to write notes. Um, and, and teachers still need a, um, a smart board or a whiteboard to, to present and lecture. And that's where we think a device like a Surface really shines. So not only does it have sort of the, the tablet ease of use and touch screen and the lightweight mobility of, um, of a tablet device, but it also has sort of the integrated kickstand and, and keyboard of a fully productive laptop device. And then in addition, we have, you know, best in class digital inking. I really challenge any other device to match us on our, on our digital inking capabilities. Um, and then with the wireless display adapter and support for Miracast, teachers can actually present from their surfaces uh, anywhere in the classroom, untethered, uh, to, you know, to the whole class. And so the next um, couple slides, I'll just talk through these two areas where we really think that Surface is, is different from, from a tablet or laptop type only device. Um, so, so writing and education, um, there's actually a fair amount of research um, that has shown the importance of writing to the learning process. And I think, you know, we all recognize intuitively that the act of writing actually helps us process ideas and information in ways that, you know, typing it out on a keyboard just doesn't. Um, and then, you know, creativity, something I think we're all, you know, definitely trying to nurture in education is also sort of limited by what you can do with 100 buttons, you know? Almost all great ideas start out as a scribble on a notepad or, um, you know, a diagram on the back of a napkin. Um, it seems like our mind kind of just flows more easily into fingertips holding a pen over a sheet of paper than, um, than fingertips poised over a keyboard. And, um, and, you know, there's also a lot of concepts that are just impossible to represent with text. Right, so equations and diagrams and pictures and representations that that you know you just can't type out. 
So that's, you know, that's sort of the, the main impetus of this idea of having a digital way to write uh, with your device. And then, you know, some uh, classroom presentation. I think this is something that's been a little bit overlooked by the one-to-one -one trend, but really is a huge part of how learning is delivered. Um, and so teachers are finding themselves more and more moving back and forth between this sort of what we call stage on the stage model, right? Standing in front of the class, lecturing uh, the traditional way uh, of teaching. And this newer model of, you know, teacher as a chief learner, where they're sort of facilitating, guiding, participating with students and learning activities. And so a Surface, you know, paired with uh, some sort of Miracast receiver or the Surface wireless display adapter plugged into a projector or display um, actually allows teachers to move back and forth seamlessly between these two modes, you know, without, you know, getting up from behind their desk uh, or, or something like that. So Jacqueline, it really does seem like Microsoft has a lot of power behind this brand new computer. Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that a school district can use it for. I know there's a lot of teachers out there listening that might be in like a Google Apps for Education environment. Can those school districts take advantage of a Surface or should those school districts look towards the Chromebooks? Are you, are you locked in if you're a Google school or is the Surface the tablet for you? No, it's, you're absolutely not locked into anything. You know, um, you can absolutely run Google Apps or any web-based um, uh, productivity software with a Surface. And even the Surface 3 runs full Windows now. So it, it runs um, Intel's latest quad-core Atom processor. So you can run desktop software. You can install anything you want on this device. Um, as well as, you know, accessing Google Apps or any other cloud-based um, solutions. So, Jacqueline, talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you can add on to there. I know one of the big things about the Surface tablet is that it does have that USB device. What can you add on to give your classroom just a little bit more excitement? Yeah, you can absolutely think about this tablet as a full PC. So it has a, a USB 3.0 port as well as a mini display port. Um, so you could use any kind of USB peripheral with this, including some microscopes and some um, sensors. I know a lot of science teachers like to use these um, sensors like pH balance, uh, uh, speed, temperature sensors, as well as microscopes. So it's great for that. And um, I kind of just wanted to walk through a little bit this new device. So this is the Surface 3. Um, it's the thinnest, lightest surface we've ever built. Uh, it's 1.37 pounds, so it's super light and super thin. You know, Jack, on Windows, of course, is going to be launching version 10 very soon, and there's a lot of neat educational apps that are out there. I mean, just looking at their website, again, surface.com slash education, it looks like, you know, we've already talked to OneNote. You've got Word, you've got Excel, you've got uh, Edmodo is on here. You've got Skype, you've got PowerPoint, Classflow. Could you walk us through some of these apps that students can take advantage of on the new Surface tablets? Sure, very happy to. So the first thing I'm gonna show you is OneNote. And I know you've talked to the OneNote team already, but really uh, OneNote is the killer app for education. Um, this, what I'm showing you right now is the OneNote class notebook. So you can see I've got a collaboration space here. I've got um, a content library and then I have specific individual um, private areas for each one of my students. So you can see I, I'm here, Professor Russell, in my study of magical objects class. And I'm going to pretend to be the teacher here using my OneNote class notebook. So. Um, so class, you can see that this, uh, this week's module, we're studying broomsticks. So we're studying the basics of broomsticks, their history, and their manufacture. Um, and last night's homework assignment, I asked you to take your two favorite broomstick models, compare and contrast them based on data, and give me your recommendation. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through one of my students' uh, homework assignments here and see what he came up with. I go to his section and his homework uh, section, I can see his broomstick comparison assignment. And it looks like he compared the Nimbus 2000 with a Thunderbolt 7. And for his handling test, it looks like he flew them through the Triwizard maze. Uh, and the Nimbus 
did, did better on the handling test. For his speed test, it looks like he flew them across the Black Lake, and uh, the Nimbus started out slowly but got faster, so there's this idea of acceleration, whereas the Thunderbolt had a fairly consistent speed. At this point, I will ask my class uh, to tell me what the difference is between acceleration and speed. Uh, and then we're going to use a different app, uh, another great pen-enabled app um, called Fluid Math, to take a look at this concept of acceleration and speed a little bit more detail. So I'm going to go ahead and um, draw my uh, Thunderbolt broomstick. I'm not a very good artist, so bear with me. And, uh, and my Nimbus. And we're going to say we flew them across the Black Lake. I'm going to go ahead and put some labels on these, A and B. And the distance across Black Lake, um, let's say, is 1,000 meters. Now I'm going to use some equations to represent this. So we're going to say the Thunderbolt travels at a speed of 80 miles per hour for a time of t. And we're going to say the Nimbus traveled at a speed of only 10 miles per hour. But because the Nimbus was accelerating, um, we're going to say it traveled uh, at t squared, so a quadratic equation. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, simulate this race. And you can see that the Thunderbolt does start off quicker, but the Nimbus, because it's accelerating, kind of catches up, although it's difficult to see who actually wins the race. So I'm going to go ahead and graph this. And you can see I've got my two functions plotted here on my graph. One is a linear function, and one is a quadratic sort of curved equation here. And if I zoom out on my graph, I'm going to see if these two functions ever intersect. Um, and you can see that it looks like they do right here. Uh, these two functions intersect at time equal to t. So if I set t equal to 8, for example, we can see what each of these equations um, end up being. And you can see that, oops, you can see that, um, that they are tied. So the Nimbus and the Thunderbolt are tied at 640 meters. And if I pull out my table of values here uh, on my graph, you can see if I scroll down here, um, that they are tied at t equals 8, and at 1,000 meters at the end of the race, the Nimbus clearly wins the race. So this is just a great tool to use, especially for math teachers, to illustrate some concepts. And again, uh, you know, the inking and the pen is super important in, in education. You know, Jacqueline, it certainly does seem like the Surface is one of those perfect devices. It's a tablet, it's a desktop, it's expandable. You can use them in a classroom situation to not only help your kids out, but really keep track of what your kids are doing 24-7. It looks like an amazing device for flipped learning. Let me ask you the final question here. If I'm a school district and I'm looking to get myself into a Microsoft environment and purchase these Surface tablets, what do I need from you? Can I just get the tablets, or is there accessories that you would recommend? We've got a lot of really great partners who make rugged cases for the Surface. Uh, this one that I'm holding up right here is um, called the Feather from Incipio. It's a great uh, protection for you know corner drops and, and whatnot. It fully covers the device and also allows for our kickstand to come out. So this is a, a great option. Another one that's a little bit more rugged is this case from STM. It's got a clear back here, so it's great to show, you know, school asset tags on the device as well. Uh, and it's also um, very rugged. You can see the, the corners have pretty thick rubber protection, so it protects from those corner drops. Um, one other thing I want to show is we have several partners that do customization of devices. So you can get the type covers etched, or you can actually get the devices uh, skinned and etched as well. So those are just a couple different case options. We've got several more partners that do uh, rugged cases for the surface to help protect them from sort of classroom usage. Well, Jacqueline, congratulations on the launch of an amazing educational device. For anybody out there that's looking for more information, you can certainly check out surface.com slash education, where you can find all the information about the great devices. If you scroll down a little bit farther, you can find out a little bit about the pricing and how you can bundle your devices with other types of cases and covers. Of course, it goes through all the different apps that you can get for your Windows device. And then all the way at the bottom of the site, you have your accessories if you're looking for dongles or if you're looking for 
cases or sleeves or anything like that, definitely check out surface.com slash education. Jacqueline, other than going to the website, where can we find out more information? What are those social networks that people can contact Microsoft? Sure. So we've got a Facebook site. So um, if you look for our Surface Facebook site, you can see all sorts of updates from us there. Um, we also work closely with our education team at Microsoft. So if you go to our education Facebook site or Twitter handle, um, we post a lot of uh, education-related Surface updates through there. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Jacqueline, for joining us today. And please um, come back and, and share some more great things with Surface and the Surface tablet. I'd be happy to. Thank you so much for having me, Jeff. Well, my friends, that wraps up the 118th episode of the TeacherCast podcast. I want to thank again my friends from Microsoft Education for coming on the show and sharing this amazing device, the brand new Microsoft Surface 3 tablet. There's, of course, several ways that you can reach out and be a part of our show each and every week. We love it when you find us on Twitter at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail at TeacherCast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at teachercast.net. And of course, all of our shows are archived audio and video and can be subscribed over at teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. And while you're there, please take a moment and give us a rating and a review. It is absolutely the best way to share TeacherCast with your network. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for allowing TeacherCast to be a part of your PLN. And thank you so much for allowing me to bring you professional development. Please join me every Sunday night live on TeacherCast.tv as we bring you the Tech Educator Podcast live at 7 o'clock. Until next time, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students.